Hello and welcome fellow Wasteland survivors, I'm Dean, and it is great to see you back for part two of our Adam Katz Bowling Alley build here at Echo Lake Lumber Mill. In today's video, we're going to bring over our pin box delivery system and install it into the build. It is the most crucial part of this build, and without it, we wouldn't be able to make this 100% fully automated. This system should take the pins away, sort them, bring them back, and restack them for us. And if you remember right, in the last video, I said I had kind of a hard time figuring out how I was going to feed this system. Well, here's a quick look at it, and this is the hot mess that I came up with to get the job done. All right, now we've got a lot to cover today, so let's quit messing around and get this video started. Now I've already taken our pin delivery system and installed it into our build where it needs to go. It was super simple, super quick, I didn't think we needed to see a clip on that. But what we do need to do is we need to remodify our build that we have already been building to accommodate it. Now if you'll notice I've got a few of these slanted roofs out, a couple of half a barn walls and a couple of more roofs snapped to the top of that. What we're going to do is we're going to take this prefab over and we're going to place it up against the front of our pin delivery system. This will allow me to kind of figure out how we are going to design the conveyor belts to feed our system. So I'll bring it on over, we'll get it lined up the best that we can, and we'll place it in there. Now this is the big issue that I had when I did this. Everything that we did testing this wise was done with straight conveyors. And as you can see, because of those half a barn walls, there's no way we're going to be able to snap any of those conveyors onto those chutes. Also, it's a little lower than I had anticipated. I thought this part of the slanted roof would be a little bit higher. Now, after a few months of thinking about it and some different design concepts, this is something that I thought that might work, and actually it did. Now I had to modify it several times, but it actually overall turned out to be what I used in this build. Here we're seeing a few clips of it feeding in eight of the ten pins. And as you can see, every now and then a couple of the pins are hanging up. That's to be expected. Because if you remember right, we are working on an 80% chance that a pin is going to go through the box. Since there are 10 pins in all, that means our percentage chance is much, much lower. And here we go trying to drop them all in. And it worked out pretty good other than a pin fell over. And that's to be expected. That's going to happen every now and then because we cannot control the way these pins drop into the box or how they flow through the box they could hang up or they could fall over if they came through but overall it's working great and it looks great it's stacking those pins up nicely alright now the way I'm hoping this system works is this conveyor belt underneath our pin drop system will come on when it's been activated it'll run for five seconds it'll deposit all of the pins and bowling balls onto this conveyor belt and sending send them into this separator three seconds after that conveyor shuts off the rest of the system will come back on bowling balls will be separated and sent up that elevator conveyor while the bowling pins will continue down this conveyor belt to this conveyor storage there's some vacuum hoppers connected to the side of it that will feed these elevators and take our bowling pins up above us and into our drop box now this system did change a little bit in its final 
construction, but it's pretty much about the same as we're seeing right now. All right, let's go up on top and let's see how the tracking system is running. Now, to get this in, I did have to stair step or stack these conveyors somewhat. The way this is going to work is one conveyor belt is going to run three pins, while the other conveyor belt runs two pins. Then on the other side, it's a repeat of the same thing. One conveyor belt runs three pins, one conveyor belt runs two pins. Now this one is actually the three pin conveyor belt, so one pin will drop off on that conveyor below it, the second pin will drop off on this conveyor below that, and the third one of course will drop down onto that conveyor to be fed into the box. Now the conveyor belt that's underneath is only running two pins, so it just basically has a split and it's bled into the uh, pin drop box. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now on this side, it's the same thing. This conveyor is going to run three pins. And as you can see, the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to split one of these conveyor belts up and run it off onto two different conveyor belts. And we'll use one of those directional arms to do it. Now if you'll remember right from the last video, I said I tested a lot while I was building this. And this is one of the times when I'm doing some testing. Here I've actually got the timing set up so it drops just the amount of pins that I need into our pin drop box. But it keeps the conveyor belt system full of pins so that way we don't have great lengths of time waiting for pins to get here and drop through the box. Now, the thing to really kind of notice or note about all of this is the signs that I've put up on the conveyor belts. It took a lot of signs to get this to guide or guide these pins in the directions that I needed them guided. Without them, it hardly ever worked because the pins would drop in sideways, upside down, uh, whatever. You can see them hanging up. They're ju it's just not working very well. There goes a pin upside down. So I really had to put a lot of those signs in to guide these pins in the direction that I need them to go. That alone took an immense amount of time because even if a sign was off by, let's say, like a half an inch, it might not work. But if you readjusted it, then it would work just perfect. But still, because we cannot control the way these pins react, it's still not 100% flawless. Here, we can see a continuous use of the conveyor belt splitting the pins up. Two pins go to the left, and then the gate, the little directional arm opens, which allows the pin to go down the long way. Now it'll close, two more pins will go to the left, open up again, and let another pin go on down the rest of the system. This took a little bit of time figuring out how to time this so that directional arm allowed the pins, the right amount of pins, to go in the right direction. Here's another look uh, while I'm testing, and we've got a few more of these resident signs out trying to guide it and get it going in the direction I need it going. And as you can see, it's helping, but it's still not doing it good enough. So we've got a lot more testing and a lot more running of this system until we can get these flaws worked out. But once again, I'd like to reiterate, I can't make it 100% because we cannot control the pins and the way they drop. You can even quick save, reload your quick save, and the pins will drop a completely different way than they did before that. Um, I think it's because of the bounding boxes around the items that we use. We all know that one side of an object has a bigger collision area than the other side. <clears throat> Excuse me. Here we're taking another look at this side of the conveyor system. We've got more of those residential signs in. 
and I'm actually testing it to see if they're going to drop through and into the box. And I'm testing three pins at a time here. And it's working pretty decent, but like I said, every now and then one's going to hang up or get twisted in the conveyor belt on its way here. Now what really made this a pain in the butt was that, you know, we've got 10 pins to get down here. And if even one of them hangs up, you don't get them all here. So because our 20% chance a pin's going to hang up over the 10 pins, that actually turned out to be an 80% chance that the box was not going to drop all 10 pins at one time. I worked many, many weeks trying to alleviate that, but it just can't be done. So we're just going to have to deal with a 20% chance that all 10 pins are going to drop at the same time. Here I'm running all 5 pins on this side of the track system. And as you can see, they're all dropping down pretty decent, and I think it's working pretty good. <clears throat> Excuse me. Once again, just every now and then, one's going to hang up. And they're even standing up pretty decent. Uh, I was having a lot of pin tippage problems before, but now I'm not really having that problem. Um, every now and then a pin will tip over. Now here's a good example about what I mean about how pins react. I can run this system the way we're looking at it right now over and over and over again. I've actually got 45 pins running through the system but it might do it all 45 pins two three times in a row but then all of a sudden bam look at that something gets hung up if something gets hung up in the track system it's just going to mess everything else up and throw the timings off of all the other pins um, like i said i adjusted and adjusted and this is the best and got the best results in how I've done this and you can see we've got a lot of those residential signs out guiding these pins around all right now these next few segments are me testing the entire system together we got to make sure all of the timings through the three systems are in sync with one another those systems are the takeaway system the sorting system and the delivery system so if they're out of sync with one another, it's just not going to work. We're only going to get some pins or no pins or whatever. So it's very important to test this over and over and over again to make sure that those systems are in sync with one another. Even if they're off by like a half a second, after you run this 10, 15, 20 times, now it's completely out of sync. So it did take quite a bit of time to get these timings figured out where they're working perfectly in harmony with one another. All right, now when the system is tripped, it'll take three seconds for this conveyor belt to come on. That should give it plenty of time for the bowling ball and whatever in there. Now that conveyor will run for five seconds, which will deposit the bowling balls and pins onto the conveyor belt on the right-hand side. Once the conveyor belt has shut off, three seconds later, the delivery system will become active, which will bring our bowling pins in and restack them up for us. But we got to make sure, once again, that the timing is correct, because if not, this belt could still be running, which would knock those pins over or try to send them back into the sorting system. And it's working great. I couldn't be happier. All right, let's go up on top and let's see how the pin drop box is working. I've activated the system, so I've got a few seconds before it's going to become active up here. I've got a little spot I can stand, and from this point of view, I can see how these pins are reacting and dropping down into the box. And they're dropping in, and they're looking good. Okay, eight pins are in. We've only got two more to go. There goes our ninth pin. And here comes our tenth pin. And, yeah, it's going to go through. All right, perfect. 
the system seems to be working good. And other than a few extra signs and tweaking, this is actually how it looks now. We can see how many signs I actually got out there. And I haven't done a count on it yet, which I was going to, to mention it in this video. But I think there's about 80 to 90 of those uh, residential signs out there. All right, since our pin delivery system is working pretty good, we need to finish up the rest of our build. What I've done here is I've got a few floors out as a guide. And I've used group select to bring some pictures over, and I've got them lined up the best that I can, which are actually, they're pretty good. Now, this is what we're going to use to cover the front of our pin drop box. I don't want those ugly signs to be seen from the inside while you're bowling. Now, this should give us a pretty good look. The only thing that I'm a little worried about is it seems to be pretty close to the floor. And that might give us some problems with the ball jumping and bouncing and whatever. But it worked out. All right, here in this segment, what I've done is I've used our seamless car carpet technique. And I've placed all these mats together in one straight line. I've brought them back up to our makeshift floor. And I'm going to line them up with the floorboard down the center. Now, the reason that I'm doing this is because I need a way to uh, fix up our gutter ball system. This is not the original way I wanted to do it, but the way I wanted to do it, it wasn't working and I couldn't get it figured out. So I thought these are going to be the better objects to use for that part of our build. So what I'm doing now is I'm lining up these containers and uh, using a carpet glitch to place them inside of one another or a little bit into one another and then this quarter floor to lift it up so when I take the carpet out it drops down onto our seamless carpet and we should be able to move these all at one time alright let's give it a test and see if it's gonna work and grab this one carpet and yep sure enough everything is carpet glitched all together so now we'll take it over to a conduit and a concrete pillar so that we can group select it now don't group select anything but the first carpet now this is the best of both worlds the first carpet is group selected but the other carpets are setting on top of it or connected to it so it still thinks those other carpets and items are carpet glitched and because of that now we can insert these objects into anything that we want and what I want to do with it is make a little spacer filler in the center of our gutter ball track so that way it's just not this big wide conveyor belt hanging out on the sides. Um, like I said earlier, this wasn't my first thought about doing this, but this is the way I ended up doing it, and I'm actually overall pretty happy with it. Um, the objects I wanted to use didn't have any color, and so I kind of really like having that little bit of offset color. All right, now the only thing left to do is the other side, so we'll do the same thing and we'll group select it, take it over and place it in as well. Now something that's really awesome about doing this is if you don't get it right, that's okay. The first carpet is still the carpet or part of the carpet of the carpet glitch. So all you have to do is grab that first carpet and you can take the whole thing out of the build, regroup select it, bring it back over and you can put it back in. And as you can see here, I'm a little bit too far to the left, so that's what I'm going to do. I'll go ahead and pull it out, bring it back over and straighten it up. But we'll do that a little bit later while we're not on camera. And now all we got to do is take a few of these objects away that we were using to do that and we can replace the floor back in again and now we can actually even see the uh, conveyor belt over on the left hand side up against the wall there as well and that's a gutter ball track too and here's our main bowling alley or bowling lane 
and yeah this is looking great I'm very very happy with the turnout now apparently I'm not the only one that's happy here in case you haven't noticed over this last two videos the settlement happiness factor here has been at a hundred percent now I'm not really bragging because we all know that it's pretty easy to create a hundred percent happiness in a settlement with two three or four settlers but what really blew me away was how long I kept this hundred percent happiness factor these people here at Far Harbor must have really had it bad to be that happy with nothing but just a roof over their head that's literally all I've got is a roof over the beds and a couple of stores I've got a couple of stores out so that way in case I run short on resources I've got a place to pick a few extra up alright now for this next segment I'd like to show something that I've done quite often in my settlement builds but I've never really ever made a video on it what I'd like to do is make this area a power armor parking area and that static truck is in the way I would really like to have it over here by the Adam Katz garage to kinda of give it you know more of a garage look but only thing we can do is scrap it but I do know one of a couple of ways that you can actually move these items these objects what I've done is I put out an elevator a quarter floor beside it and I've group selected it now you cannot do this if you're gonna leave the elevator out the reason is is because when you group select it it leaves the buttons behind and the only way to get them back on the elevator is to store it or to scrap it but if we take the elevator over to the truck we can move it and get it where we would like to put it now keep this in mind ladies and gentlemen this tip or this idea does not work with every type of vehicle but this truck happens to be one of the ones that it does work with I discovered this by accident trying to group select an elevator and put it in the broken corner of the building and when I moved real quick it hit the truck and that truck went flying which brings me to the next tip or suggestion if you're doing this do it in smooth small increments because if you move too quick you could literally send this truck flying clear across the map it's pretty fun I've got a couple of clips where I did some uh, vehicle volleyball and I mean I was just knocking this thing all over the place so <clears throat> anyways excuse me if you work with it a little bit you can actually move the vehicle around and place it where you want to and it looks like it's pretty close I think we just want to move the rear part of the truck a little bit more to the right to kind of help line it up once again it's very smooth very slow because if you jerk it may hang up and hook it and it would just fling that truck everywhere and there we go I think that's gonna work out pretty good and uh, just for a little sneak peek at what you can expect to see let's see it kinda in its most finished form I've added in a couple of floors over the top of it and some metal posts with some of these uh, whatever tapestries on the sides to give it kind of a you know carport effect and I really think that this adds to the Adam Katz garage and it makes it look super awesome alright now for our final clip of today's video I would like to show something that we've seen in our electrical tips and tricks videos but just in case you're not familiar with that I will link that video and um, playlist on the screen here somewhere also it'll be in the description below but basically what we're doing is we're using some electrical conduits and connectors some uh, wiring in between them and we're gonna place a light down here underneath of the conduit to make it look like a light hanging from the ceiling over top of our pool table also one thing else I'd like to mention and say is I do believe 
and I hope you all agree with me, that I think it's pretty epic to get even one bowling pin to do what we've been doing in this video series. But to get all ten to do it, it's got to be something special. And that's why I say I think this is my crowning achievement to all of the years building here in Fallout 4. And I'm very, very happy that you've all been here with me while we've been on this incredible journey playing this awesome game. All right, everybody, thank you all very much. And just like always, please, until next time, stay safe and peace.